welcome to episode 4 of the premium motherhood journey this is day 4 and it started with premium tears <laughs> as through the night I was awake trying to decongest my breast of the of the engorged milk of the Noavel started having pains in my back and the pains got worse in the early hours of the day um decided to take a quick go well, get into the hot shower but that didn't help to decompress the meal but um the breast but i felt better and then you know had breakfast and all that and um baby woke up and um he was able to feed on one of the breasts and had a little relief but still was overwhelmed in all of everything that was going on at the same time you know suture line hurts back hurts chest hurts breast hurts everywhere hurts emotionally i'm hurt and um, i requested my niece to use out to allow to mop my back to relieve the pain i gave some relief and eventually i couldn't sit on a chair or stand I had to kneel and then sit on the floor eventually and then have a cup of coffee for some energy so far so good so eventually I had to finish my food sitting on the floor because the pain was unbearable I had to feed my son again and then listen to some beautiful music that I love CC Winans Elevation Church, Maverick Music, Hallelujah, Amen. They were really awful to get my emotions in check. I had to cry it out and I think I really did feel better after crying because I didn't get to hold in all my emotions and I was able to just let it out through the cry as if a huge load was lifted off my shoulder. So crying really does help. So I had to request my niece to get me a little rub and shea butter mixed together to help me rub my back so that I could feel some relief. So I helped me massage my back because I noticed that um, I think the after effect of the anesthetic injection that I was given and um, in my back. Um, the only effect that I noticed earlier was my body was itchy all over and that stopped since Saturday and then I started feeling pain overnight on Sunday up until you know, morning and then midday she helped me up the back and I was able to actually have a very premium sleep of one hour and I felt better you know, I think my body released some happy moments because I woke up in a good mood it was earlier that day even when my son was then couldn't even be bothered that I was there because emotionally I was drained and um, I just you know, I just <laughs> I just didn't want to be bothered by anybody you know um, because he came back from work and he didn't even ask me how are you babe how are you feeling? Hope you are good. You know? What they said was alpha. And in my mind, how far what with what? Like, don't talk to me like that. But I just kept my cool. Because I didn't have energy for any drama. So, later, so that day, well, my, my, some friends of my niece came to them. So then we chatted, we laughed. It was nice. And then one of my colleagues from school, came with her son. She got lots of stuff, goodies. It was really nice. And we chatted also. I felt good. And so for the rest of that day, um some happy really happy hormones were released. And then days before those visitors came. Um and I woke up my husband came into the room again. And um oh before I heard that yeah, it was the midwife's um, 
this is actually hook me up so she came you know how I even told her she would likely come and she came and I was actually happy to see her because I had a lot of questions on my mind that I was going to ask her so I asked her a lot of questions and you know she said a lot of reassuring things that what I'm feeling is normal that you know I should just keep going that the, that the coming days will be better you know I think that was one of the things that, apart from the rest, yeah, talking with my midwife helped a lot. Uh, she weighed the baby, he had lost weight. Um, he ate some more than they expected, or because of, uh, they actually expected him to lose weight. But he had lost a little more, but she said, he is pooing a lot and eating a lot. It's fine, and then she watched him latch to the breast and said, we are doing fine that the nipple is just sensitive from all of the trauma of having to be repeatedly sucked on the reason they to get better so i felt really reassured and happy after she left my husband came in and i was able to narrate everything that happened between myself and the midwife and the baby and um, i felt good for telling the story because ideally normally he would have been there too you know, watch the whole thing. And then I was in, you know, my niece's friends came and my, my colleague came. And um, for the first time since um, eight days in the hospital and I got home, you know, I felt okay. And um, my niece said, Oh, she found a series I would like. Blackbird. You know, about. Um, someone was going to prison, working with the police, blah blah blah. Sounded like something that I had watched before that I liked. I said, okay, no problem. For the first night, I felt like I was TV. I had a moment, I just wanted to be in the room and not be bothered. Then my husband came and said, Oh, don't you want to sit in the living room? I came out, I sat on the couch. It was good. And then we were able to watch like three episodes of The Blackbird on Apple TV it was cool till I got tired and um was it past then like ten thirty and I tried to go to bed. So while watching I tried try to clean the baby skin with um warm water, warm soapy water um while it was lying down on his changing mat. It was nice. <laughs> As usual, I was screaming his knife out, but he did enjoy it because afterwards he got a coconut body massage, but a coconut oil my body massage, and he was just yawning. My baby was just yawning, <laughs> and it was obvious he enjoyed it, and he was feeling so relaxed and all of that. I knew what that would have done for me if it was me that was being like, that was experiencing that. But I would, I really need that even in my own life right now. So basically, that's been day four. It's been an emotional ride for me in the last couple of days. My life has changed 720 degrees, and I'm still trying to understand and find myself and trying to understand my new self, my new life, my new shadow, and um, come out victorious. And be on top of life again. Trying not to feel as much pain as I'm feeling. If all of these pains are, you know, removed, I can think of the next move of my life. But I guess well, I'm still here, you know, nursing the wound from my victory. Hallelujah. Yeah, nursing the wound from my victory. I still strategize strategize my life and know where I want to be and what I want to do because very easy but I believe God that it's gonna get easy because I literally had to pray and ask God to make it easy and uh, I woke up with a renewed energy and I was at some point I was like God please let this whatever is flowing inside of me continue to flow because I don't want to feel miserable again. I need strength to kill myself, to kill this boy.
Alright, now that's where it is. I will that person should take care of us. If you take care of me, then boy will be fine. Or whoever that is listening out there, you have someone that just put to bed around you. The business is not number one, how is baby? How is mother doing? But she's going through a lot of stuff. And she needs everybody around her. She needs to feel like everybody around her actually cares about her. Not like she was a cow that was fed for nine months to bring forth a baby. And everybody's. There is no excuse. If she didn't want that child, that child would not have made it up and left. That's the truth. So it's not your business if baby can talk or not. She can talk. Let her tell you how she feels. And then you can know how you can help her. If you help her, the baby will be fine. If you understand uh, what I mean, we just don't understand it. People are often too quick to say, Oh, eyes, baby, eyes, baby, eyes, baby. Live. The baby is fine. He wasn't born. He didn't die at birth. The mother didn't die at birth. So ask the mother how she is feeling. And to husbands out there, don't be insensitive. Man, and take care of baby. Hmm? Excuse me. You already accepted that rule 10 months ago. You don't need to remind her of her job. Your job is to take care of her and make sure that she's emotionally stable and emotionally fine. That physically she's not suffering too much pain. Whatever you can do to alleviate her pain, alleviate her, emo- alleviate her emotional, whatever it is that she likes. She likes ice cream, she likes whatever. Just make her happy. Your baby will be fine. Always talk now. Oh, women pay attention to their children more than yeah, it's because of some foolish things some men do. It's like not asking your wife how is she. It's like not showing her the showing her the care and the love that she showed her during her pregnancy. Or some women didn't even experience love and care. Realize what she was doing while she was pregnant. Continue to do double, triple. Because right now, that's why she even needs it more. Because her whole body has changed. She can never be the same person again. So it's not about the baby. You need to save your love. So you can't, you can't be saying, oh, baby wants to eat up. You need to go back for him. You need to change now. What rule, what are you doing that you say you should do that? Why can't you do it? She carried the child for 10 months. Did it kill you to change his nappy? No. Did it kill you to carry the child and make, let, her, let your wife sleep? No. So please, let everybody have sense. Let everybody behave themselves and start taking responsibility. Man. Hmm. If you've ever said anything stupid to someone that just put a bed, I will forgive you. People have been doing it for about 2,000 years and it's until you go through it and you know how you feel. I hope um, this is um, changing somebody's life and helping them to gain better perspective. For those that are intending mothers, young girls out there, husbands, family members, friends, let's all know in the world that we should play. When we're involved in the motherhood journey of someone, because we need your mother, I imagine. Until next time, thanks for listening. See you in the next episode. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share.